here goes nothing. Hey friends, if you're new here, my name is Alicia and some folks call me Lou. You can call me whatever you want. I don't care. I care a little bit. I'm an interior designer, painter, mom of a small baby girl, and I make videos that hopefully inspire you to get out there and be your artsy, fartsy self. Let's go. So about a year ago, we bought a picnic table, just a regular old picnic table from one of those big box stores. We set it outside and we forget it outside. Rain, humidity, sun. Sun like you wouldn't believe, the hottest sun you've ever seen. It is hot. What the? Hellacious. Well, today you're in luck. We are gonna paint this bad boy and we aren't just gonna paint it one color. We're gonna paint it many colors. We're gonna give ourselves a task so stupidly intensive. No, I'm kidding. Um, if you think about a picnic table or any table, tabletop surface is really just a blank canvas. I mean, everything is a blank canvas if you, if you really think about it, you know? I thought instead of just going with one solid color, let's have fun with it. Let's, let's try a pattern. Anytime I start a new project, I like to start by gathering images that inspire me, um, color palette direction, or things that will help me kind of figure out the pattern that I'm working on. I have been inspired by Annie Albers and Gunta Stoltz. These are Bauhaus female artists. And I also really love the palette of this Swedish artist, Hilma A.F. Klint. Once I have a general sense of the design direction that I'd like to go in, I started with gridded paper and just mapping out the dimensions of the picnic tabletop. It was eight feet by three feet, so I just did eight inches by three inches on the gridded paper, and this allowed me to play around with different pattern options and colorways. So I'm just experimenting with colored pencil, using my Pinterest images as a basis of design and sort of riffing off of all of those images that I had saved. I ended up going with this, I really love this palette of like lilac, um, kind of an orangey red, pink and warm yellow, kind of a golden yellow. Next, I pulled out my giant Benjamin Moore swatch kit and just started pulling colors that matched the colored pencil version that I had drawn. And this just kind of gave me a nice range of those colors to play around with. And the next step is to just kind of take them outside where the picnic table is gonna live and see how they feel together as a group. So I brought the swatches outside just to make sure that they work with our color scheme out here. And I think they do. Yeah. I don't know about that dark yellow. We'll see, I'm gonna bring it over here. And I'm gonna set these down and kind of go through and just take a step back. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, what I didn't show you was that I actually swapped that light yellow color for a more pinky lilac. I think that'll just match the tones outside better. Next up, time to go shopping. Get in, losers. We're going to Lowe's. You're not a loser. I'm sorry I said that. You're not. You know who's a loser? Me. You know who woke up with a rash on their forehead? Me.
another successful trip. Oop. Okay, we out here. <clears throat> it is hot. It is hot. And it is humid. But we're doing this. You know why? Because we love DIY projects. Okay, let's talk about materials. Okay, sir. I'm gonna need you to just take a chill pill. The materials that you need will depend on the state of your table. So our picnic table has been sitting out in the sun in the weather for about a year. We'll call it two years. Based on the amount of wear, the amount of grime and gradu on this table, I know that I'm definitely gonna wanna scrape and sand. We've got the DeWalt Orbital Sander sanding pads. Truly, these are just ones that I had on hand. Uh, 220 grit, that is a little bit of a finder sand and I don't think we want that. So I'm gonna see what else we have. I think I have some 60 or 80. 80 would probably be perfect. I've got, again, just things that I had around the house. I've got some like heavy duty uh, brushes. I have no idea what this is. Comment below if you know what this is, but I've had this thing forever. Uh, I like found it on the street pretty much and thought, oh, cool. Oh, it actually says it right here. It is a smoothing brush. Cryptic. But I'm gonna use these just to like, maybe knock off some of the bigger chunks of dirt uh, before I sand. And then this I'll use maybe after I sand just to like get, get the majority of the big like sanding chunks off. I've also got some like putty, putty knives. These I'm gonna use in the very beginning to knock off um, the family of mushrooms that's growing on this bench over here. And like any other thing that, you know, you just, you're just gonna, you're just gonna go with the flow. You're gonna vibe with the universe. You're gonna, you're gonna see what, what the table needs, you know? You're gonna, you're gonna let the, the table tell you what it wants. And my table was telling me it needs some, some putty knives. Um, extension cord, because orbital sander comes with a, a silly, silly, cute little short, short cord. We need, we need to get from the wall over there. I'm pointing, you can't see it, but it's there. Um, the outlet's way over there. And finally, some PPE, people. What does PPE stand for? Personal protection equipment. Personal protective equipment. That feels more correct. You want some safety gear. Protect those precious, beautiful eyes of yours. It's, okay, it's getting really hot. The baby's about to wake up from a nap. So I'll see you back out here for the sanding and the scraping and the brushing. Okay, this is, this is the shirt before. Just one small sweat line. Let's see what happens afterwards. just about ready to get started sanding so that's right protect those precious little peepers okay we have a situation we have a little situation Half of my sanding pad just, just flew off. Um, not sure why. Could be that these have been sitting in the closet for about a decade. Um, I don't know. Guess, guess we'll try something else. Okay. 
We're gonna try grandma. Um, she, she's, she's seen some stuff. She has seen some stuff in her day. But we're gonna give her a go. I bet, I bet she, I bet she knows what to do. Exactly what to do. are ready to finally get started painting, priming and painting. It's been about, oh, there's the siren. Get it together. Oh, please. We're good. It's been about four weeks since I sanded the table, because <laughs> real talk, we, we've been busy. We are selling our house. So we've had a lot of house showings, AKA a lot of house cleanings. Good news is it's freaking gorgeous now. Like we went from 90 degree weather to 70 degree weather and I'm just so happy. So let's get to priming y'all. This is the part where I'm like questioning my sanity and realizing just how many sides every shape has. Every piece of wood has at least 15 sides and that they all have to be painted. So yeah, this is the point in every project really where you just question why. Why? Why would, why would I do this to myself? Um, should I keep going? Is it too late to turn back? Yes, it's too late. We've come too far. We must paint all the sides, even the ridiculous ones. Like this, this is, this table is gonna be like a fine Swiss watch. Even the inside is gonna be beautiful. something for you. For me? <laughs> We're done with the priming, but because I am a perfectionist and apparently a glutton for punishment. I am going to get into these little cracks with the paintbrush and the primer. So I've just got a two inch bristle brush, natural bristle brush. Let's get to it. are done priming my friends so we decided to let poppy take it for a little test drive and make sure everything was up to par next up we are going to transfer our grid lines onto the tabletop using a pencil we're just going to make some tick marks based on the pattern about every three inches so we make little tick marks and then we'll just connect the dots on each side using a ruler just like this Now it's time for my favorite part, the painting. We have so many beautiful colors to lay down on this table. So what I'll do is 
I'll start with one color. And I'm thinking I'm gonna start with the orangey red. What are we calling this? This is the Jupiter Glow. Oh, I love that, Jupiter Glow. So I think I'll start with the Jupiter Glow because that'll sort of, just looking at this sketch, I think that will give us a good sort of baseline to work from so that we don't get lost in the lines. It's like kind of our anchor point. And then we'll build off the color from there. finished the red and I'm already excited and you can kind of see where those red where those red lines hit so I think I'd like to go in with the yellow next because that makes sense to me just visually I think it'll be easy to keep track you know so I don't mess the pattern up to just go in with the yellow um, because I can use my red, my red blocks as a reference point. So let's get that yellow. Get, get, excuse me, sir. Sir. Uh -huh. looking very Ronald McDonald, I gotta say. But once we get the purple in there, bye bye McRib. Here is where we're at, and <laughs> I must admit, it's very saturated. These colors are very bold, bright, and saturated. Oh, how about the sun in your eyes? But, you know what? It's gonna get rained on, and it's gonna be in the sun day in, day out, so I'm hoping that it fades to a nice, more toned down version. Here is our next color, our final color. Did y'all see that mosquito try to attack me? He's still... There he is. <laughs> oh my God, it's huge. Okay, that means it's time for me to retire for the day. Um, I'll pick up where I left off tomorrow if it's not raining, which I'm pretty sure it will be. So we'll see. What do you think? Pink. Pink. 
Yeah. Mama painted. Yeah, Mama painted. Mm. <laughs> Tasty. Tasty. <laughs> You're so silly. Good morning, and welcome back to day 39 of this two-day project. Oh man, we're back out here after two days of rain like solid rain there's you know some leaves and a little bit of standing water that i will dry off in just a bit but the table held up just fine no bubbling in the paint um so i'd say we're good to go we're ready to finish this dang table so today i'll be painting the last color in the four color pattern. Is that four? four? Yeah, in the four color pattern and I'm excited. I'm still trying to decide if I wanna do light purple for the base, maybe the orangey red coral color, I'm not sure. I'm going back and forth about what color the base should be, the legs of the table. So I'm just gonna probably try a little bit, try a little bit of the light pink We'll call it light lilac on the base and see how I like it. But it's a beautiful day in New Orleans. It's like 70 degrees right now. And I've got my painting clothes on and I'm just ready, ready to roll. Three cups of coffee. Let's go. as this process has been I'm actually really enjoying it I mean I love painting so there's that but it's just been a really like meditative process I think that's why I like to paint simple geometries because you can just kind of zone out and like get into the flow of painting straight lines they're never straight but but it has been hot, but today it's so beautiful and I don't know, it's, it's like Stockholm Syndrome. I'm like captive to this, this project that I started, like I'm gonna finish. And now I'm just loving the process more and more, like I don't want it to, to end. That's not true. <laughs> I'm ready to be done. We are in the middle of packing up our entire house because we are moving from New Orleans to nowhere. No, I'm kidding. Our plan is to eventually find and renovate a forever home in Dallas. But until then, we will be moving into a camper, a fixer-upper, and that will be our next project, our next life project. Uh, we will be traveling around the U.S. and we don't really know how long we're going to travel. We're just going to wing it and play it by ear and we're going to document the process here. So if you like this kind of content, um, boring, rambling, um, artsy, fartsy content, stick around because we would love to share our journey with you and we're going to be renovating uh, a dumpy old camper into our dream um, Tiki Mobile. So stay tuned. Like and subscribe if you want. Ah, just a suggestion.
Is it too clownish? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I kind of like it. Kind of like it. Obviously, didn't quite, you know, finish out the detailing, but I just wanted to step back and see if I'm going to be happy with this. And part of me is like, fuck it, let's just do it. Let's do it. We still have to paint the whole inside of the picnic table, which part of me is like, do I though? Do I really have to? I don't know. Maybe not. I'm gonna at least do the sides, but maybe not the inside surfaces. We'll see. I'm gonna do the sides that are facing the outside and then we'll take a look and decide what we want to do with the in interior faces. Do you think I need to paint the inside of the table? Yeah. So that's all that's left. I just need to get in there, paint all of that, do a second coat on all the colors. Done. Easy. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Funny seeing you down here. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. If you're still here, God bless you. Thank you so much. Let's take a closer look.